Okay, so we, we started up the engine and uh, started up the aircraft. So we've gone through our before start checklist and our engine start checklist. Now we conduct the before taxi checklist. And you can see we're still on the ramp. In the before taxi checklist, what we can do is something called the instrument flight deck check. And, uh, like I said earlier, this is where we verify that all the instruments are working correctly prior to flight. We kind of follow a flow. We start at the top here, the magnetic compass, move, up, move down to our PFD, then down to our standby instruments, then up to our MFD. And I'll walk you through exactly what we're checking and what we're setting. So let's start off with the mag compass. The mag compass, we're gonna make sure that it's full of fluid, there's no leaks. The compass deviation card is present, that's required. And when, while we're taxing, we have to make sure that it swings freely. So we don't actually do a complete check right now. Uh, when we start taxing, we need to make sure that, that, that it does swing freely. So no cracks, compass deviation card, full of fluid, and it's showing a known heading. Now we are pointing towards the west. We are paralleling runway 25 right now. And it shows about a 255 heading, so that's about right. Then we're going to come down to our nav radios on our PFD. We're going to verify, we're going to put in the, the frequencies that we will be using today. Now we will be tracking VORs, and the VOR that we will be using is the Ormond VOR. Now I have 112.6 there. Where I got that from, if I look at my maps, at my low on route chart, I'll notice here, as if you can see it right here, I'm pointing to my iPad, Ormond Beach, we look at the little information box and it says 112.6. So I'll plug that in and I'll put it into the right side of the uh, nav radio. And I'll put it in COM1 and I'll also put it into, sorry, nav1 and I'll also put it into nav2 just so I have it backed up. And those, that's the only one we're going to use today. So if I was doing an ILS, I'd also put an ILS frequency in. And I'd basically, just putting the frequencies that I'll be using. From there, we'll move on to our radios on the right side. Right now I'm on the ramp, so at Ember Riddle we'll put 123.3, which is Eagle Ops, our ramp frequency. From there we'll put 121.9, our ground frequency. Then off the ground we're going to contact tower for takeoff, so we'll put that one in too, and our standbys. And then lastly from our departure clearance, uh, departure clearance our departure frequency was 125.8. So I got Eagle Ops, since I'm on the ramp, then ground, then tower and then departure frequency. So that's my radio setup. Next thing, we'll come to our flight instruments. Our airspeed should, should show zero. Our attitude indicator should be level. Since we're on the ramp and it is a level ramp, it should show level. Now it is showing about five degrees pitch up and that's because the ramp is set up uh, at the, the ramp is actually on, a, on an incline. Next, we'll go to altimeter. Make sure that we have the right altimeter setting. We have three, zero, one, two and make sure the altimeter actually reads within 75 feet of field elevation. Now Daytona Beach is 34 feet, and right now it's showing about 35 feet of uh, field elevation, almost 40, so it's within, 30, so it's within 75 feet of field elevation. We'll set our altitude bug to 2,000 feet, because that was where we got in our clearance. And then we come over to our VSI, make sure that it shows zero. Now if it doesn't show zero per the aim, if it shows, let's say, plus 100 feet, you can actually use that uh, as your zero marker. But you also want to verify why it's showing 100 feet. Uh, maybe there's some water left in the static lines, or uh, sorry, the, yeah, the static lines um, that you may want to clear up. So it shows zero for us. Then we come down to our heading indicator. We'll verify that our heading indicator matches up with the indicated heading and the mag compass, which it does. We also put uh, the runway we're taking off on, so that's zero. 70 for today uh, from the ADIS it said 7 left and 7 right when use so we'll bug that heading too we'll come down to the bottom we'll look at the outside air temperature and make sure that matches up with what was on the ADIS it shows 24 right now and 24 was on the ADIS 24 degrees Celsius so we know that our outside air temperature probe is working correctly which is very important again in IFR things you want to be watching for out for is icing if you are in the clouds or visible moisture then we come over to our indications, our, our PFD bearing indications. Now, if you look at the bottom left, we have Ormond pulled up on nav 1 and then Ormond on nav 2. We can change these bearing pointers by pushing the PFD button and then you have bearing 1 and bearing 2. I can change either one to either what's in the nav radio or either one to the GPS. Now I'll put nav 2 in GPS, bearing 2 in GPS and I'll put nav 1, uh, the bearing for the VOR. Which also tells me my distance using the GPS which is, it looks like we're 7.7 .7 miles away from Ormond. 
We'll verify that our transponder code is correct from the clearance, 0224, which it is. And then we're also going to look at our time, the local time, 1156. We want to change that to Zulu time since IFR, a lot of time that will be given in terms of expect for the clearance time and clearance board time is given in Zulu time. So it helps us with that. And how do we do that? We go over to our MFD. We take the FMS knob on the right side here. Take the, take the, the big knob and go to the auxiliary page. And then we'll go to system setup page, the sub page. And if you look here, it says time format local 24 hours. We'll change that to UTC. And that gives us 1556, which is right since we are negative four hours from UTC. So the time is right. We do have the seconds working correctly. We also check that our timer is working by pushing the timer reference button. And we'll push start, make sure the timer works, stop, and reset it. So the timer works there. So that's our PFD. Now we'll come down to our standbys, making sure that our airspeed indicator is reading zero. Our, added, our standby attitude indicator matches up with our primary attitude indicator. So it's showing about slight five degrees nose up. Our standby altimeter, altimeter settings 3012, showing within 75 feet of field elevation, which it is. And then we come up to our MFD. Now the MFD, you want to verify that your engine indicating system is uh, all working correctly. You don't see any red X's anywhere. Same thing with the PFD, no red X's. Otherwise, that will mean one of our G1000 LRUs are, is failing. So all the engine parameters are in the green and nothing's looking unusual. We'll come up to our MFD. Now, if we're flying at night, you may want to move this mode into the night mode, which it is right now. If it's in the day, you can also push topography and it'll actually show you the uh, terrain features. But we'll keep it on, uh, on the, to the night mode just so that uh, we don't get hurt by the light in this dimly lit area. We'll come up, uh, verify that the PFD and the MFD are matching with the frequencies and the nav radios. We'll take our FMS knob and we'll scroll it all the way over to the auxiliary page and then GPS status. We'll verify that we have at least five bars, green bars and GPS one, so we're picking up at least five satellites. And same thing with GPS two. Now, we do have actually what's called RAIM, uh, sorry, not RAIM, uh, WAS. If you look here, SBAS, it says Satellite Based Augmentation System. If I push SBAS, you can see that WAS is checked. And per the uh, POH in the aircraft, this aircraft does have WAS. And some of the satellites are using WAS. If you look at here, it says D on the bottom of the green bars means differential GPS. So it is actually using it. I don't need to calculate RAIM because we have WAS. So we clear that out. And then the last thing we'll do is uh, the IC, the instrument flight deck check is complete except for the MAC compass, just going to make sure that swings freely as we taxi out. Apart from that, uh, one thing I forgot to mention was the VOR. You've got to make sure the VOR has been checked within 30 days. And typically, if you had in riddle, that'll be on your clipboard. You may have to check that in your maintenance uh, records too. If it hasn't been checked within 30 days, you'll have to check your chart supplement to see where you have VOR checkpoints. Now, some airports have the VOT, which is an actual frequency on the airport that you can tune in. It sends out two radials, the 360 radial and the 180 radial. So basically, you tune in that VOR, uh, so the VOT, tune in the 360, and if you get a from indication and it's centered within four degrees, it's fine, it's fine to use. 180 with a two indication, plus or minus four degrees, it's still good to use. Um, but your instructors will go through that in oral with you and how to determine what is a VOR checkpoint and VOR receiver checkpoints on the ground and in the air. Uh, and that is the instrument flight deck check.